Now, when this truck comes from the factory, it comes with a two inch rake, the back two inches higher than the front. So what we, the guy did is he put a two inch lift up front to even the stance out. We're gonna take it one step further. We're gonna airbag it all the way around, give us a total of four inch lift up front, two inch in the back, and have a nice even stance, and this thing will ride a ton better than it did when it came from the factory. Yeah, it's gonna be much better. Now, obviously, the first thing we had to do was get the bed out of the way. Now, with the truck bed out of the way, you can kind of see and have access to all the things you need to get to. And you got to tell, first off, we've got a lot of disassembly we've got to do. And that can be kind of fun. I Absolutely. mean, no blow torches around <laughs> right now, but we do have some work to do. Now, first thing we need to do is get rid of these uh, leaf springs, and then we'll take this hanger out of the way. And we're also going to replace these shocks. But before Matt gets crazy with the impact, I'm going to go ahead and put a jack stand underneath the pinion here so it won't rotate down and damage anything. All right, stand clear. Hold on. All right, go ahead. Clear. Okay, now that we got the leaf springs out of the way, it's time to tackle the shocks. Now, the shocks will come off and give us a little more clearance room to work with. We're going to place them with a new set when we're done. Other thing we have to do is go ahead and take off these bump stops right here. The factory ones we're not going to use anymore. It's nice because these airbag kits, they come with built-in bump stops, so that will take care of that. Also, though, we need to be able to make room for our mounting brackets for those airbags. So we've got to cut the chassis a little bit here, so we've got to get, definitely get these things out of the way before we can get that far. Now, back over here on this side, we're ready to take out this front spring hanger, but as you can see, it's riveted in there, so that gives us a couple different issues right there. And there's a couple different ways that you can take care of these rivets. Now, some guys will take a die grinder and get in there and make a little X pattern in that and then try to air chisel the, the heads off of there. Problem is, sometimes it can be a little tricky getting the grinder in there. Other guys might come along and just try to torch the heads off. Well, the problem with that is, it's getting awful hot when you're doing that, and especially on the other line, you've got fuel lines and all kinds of stuff going on back there, and you don't want to harm any of that. And if you ever want to use this bracket ever again for whatever reason, you won't be able to do that if you cut it all up when you're torching them off. So what we like to do is a little tried and true method. We'll take this little punch right here, and we're going to find it right in the center, and we'll mark that and just get that. Now, in the interest of saving bits, the big bits anyway, we're going to do this in a couple stages because if we threw the big bit in there right away, we're liable to burn through this one a little quicker than we really want to. So with our smaller hole, we can get in there with the bigger bit now and make it happen. Now, the benefit of using that smaller bit first is that this bigger one's not going to wander around on us. So once I get all these done, we can hit that with the air chisel. The heads will come right off and the bracket will come out nice and clean. So now you can see that our frame has been modified. We've got enough room for our top mounting bracket, and this is how it goes. So this will wrap around the frame and go up in place like that. Now you can see we've got enough clearance because these slotted holes here, well, those are our location points to give us an idea if we're in the right spot. What we have to do still is, I'll show you to wrap it up here, is drill out these four holes, and that's going to bolt it into place. Now, keep in mind, I want to show you something right here, is that there's going to be a lot of weight and a lot of force put on our airbag system. You want to reinforce it. And that's what these brackets are for. So this will go here, slide up there our cables, and it'll bolt all the way through. So this will be nice and strong and it'll hold any force we're going to put to it. There we go. It's, that should do it. It's that superhuman strength of yours is what it is. Hey, welcome back. So we got all the old stuff out of the way, and what we're doing now is installing some of the new bracketry for our towing kit. Keep in mind, what we're installing is a heavy-duty four-link towing system from the guys at Airbag It. Now, with a company name like Airbag It, one could reach the conclusion that we're also going to be installing the airbags, and those will be going right in here. We'll get to those here in just a couple of minutes, because before we do that, we've got to get some more of this bracketry in place, like this big bracket right here. Now, this is where the four link bars are going to sit in. So there's going to be a lot of pressure and a lot of weight on this bracket when these two bars are, are going across like that. So we want to make sure this is attached very, very good. Now keep in mind, we knocked off this spring hanger a little bit earlier. There were three holes on this side. We're going to reuse those. We're actually going to have to drill into the frame on these holes over here. We'll handle that in a second. But in the meantime, there's another one on the bottom side right there. And that can be a little bit tricky, but we've got a secret. Yeah, a little tip for you guys at home. You know, the last thing you want to do is be laying underneath the frame of this thing, pushing with all your might and get a bunch of 
hot metal being coming or chips coming down on you it can be a little bit dangerous and it can be a little tough to do so so we've got a little tip for you guys we're gonna use a floor jack with a couple of boards on and let it do all the pushing for us matt will hit the trigger on the drill and it should go pretty quick you about there yeah bring it up all right say when easy <laughs> yeah you don't want to get too carried away you'll snap the dr either the drill bit or the drill so you don't want to need to actually pick up the truck with the thing you just need to put some force behind it you ready uh, yeah no, I mean, as you can see, this stuff's some pretty strong steel we're working with. It's all quarter inch thick. It's all been CNC cut, so you know it's going to do its job. It'll be able to handle any kind of torque you put to it. Perfect. All right, so you got that good? Yeah, nice and clean. No problem, buddy. Anything I can help with. <laughs> Here's the back mounting brackets for our four-leg assembly. As you can see, this is a pretty, pretty solid piece right here. Now, the whole idea is it's going to wrap around the axle and kind of clamp on it, hold it in place. Obviously, this underneath and this going on top. Now, one of the key things I want to show you guys is the fact that it's going to actually sit up on the up against that spring perch, and it's going to keep it from rocking back and forth. It's a really tight fit, so it'll get in a situation where it'll hold it from going back and forth. The guy's putting a lot of torque to these diesels and putting some big tires on it. You don't want to have to. You won't have to worry about this axle twisting. So now the bracketry is all in place and we've got everything mounted loosely. We're going to start tying this whole system together and we can do that with these four link bars right here. Now one quick glance at these and you notice a couple of different things. One inch chromoly himes right there, Teflon coated races. That means that is ridiculously strong. We've also got our high angle misalignment spacers right there. It's going to let us tie everything in nice and good. You move on up to this end and these are greasable polyurethane bushings right there. Now when we put this bar in here, you want to put that grease fitting to the bottom. That way you can get to it. Once once you put the bed back on the truck. Now as you spin this around you've got an inch or so of adjustability on this but as you make them longer or shorter you're changing your pinion angle and your axle placement as well. So we, we're happy with the pinion angle that hasn't changed so what we want to do is set the bars up to the current angle that we've got. We'll do that on this side then we can come over and do that on the same side. It may not be perfect but we're going to be in the neighborhood for sure. Now we've got a lot of the bracketry done around the axle. Now we need to go ahead and do some of the stuff here in the back and we're gonna get rid of a few things and change a few things and add a few things. And first of all, if you back up a little bit, remember we had this stop here. It was in place to go ahead and activate the overload spring. Since we're not using springs anymore, this gets pitched to the side. What we're doing though is we're still gonna use the same mounting locations for our new bracket. Now this new bracket, what it's gonna do is relocate our shock and mount our track bar. Now the shock was mounted right here, as you can see on the inside of the frame. We're gonna relocate that to the outside. Now the track bar will come into place and what it's going to do is keep the, the rear end housing from moving back and forth. You need one when you have a four link system since this truck didn't have one when it came in because well it didn't have a four link system we need to put a mount in on the other side for the differential. So this mounting bracket here goes around the diff and this is the track bar which goes in place like that. So that'll mount in place like this and keep this whole thing from moving back and forth. Now you look at some of the stuff and you think, wow, these guys have really gone overkill on a lot of these bracketry and how big these bars are and all this stuff, but for good reason, because what we're doing is we're getting an increased load and capacity all the way around the vehicle. We'll have an increase, we'll have as much as 5,000 pound capacity on the front axle, and as much as 10,000 on the back, which is huge. The only thing is you gotta keep in mind that you need to check your owner's manual to make sure that your vehicle can handle those increased loads before you start getting crazy and throwing a bunch of weight on. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and drill out holes here for the rest of this mounting bracket and make sure that's securely mounted to handle that increased load. Now we're just about ready to get these airbags into place and these are going to fit right in there between these two brackets right here and you know what there's a lot of good reasons for these airbags. First and foremost we talked about comfort of the ride earlier. I mean think about it when you're rolling down the road before you had steel springs heavy springs banging on each other and that was your suspension. Now you've got the smooth air ride going on right there. Also sound deadening is a big thing too if you think about it on those springs all that vibration and everything is resonating up through the cab of the truck and it's all going to get soaked up right here so you're going to get a lot less road noise in the cab of the truck. Now another thing I want to point out too is that right now this is going to sit on top of this lift right now. It's going to give you that two inch lift we're adding to this truck. Now if you wanted to go in stock configuration you would just have a flat metal plate like this on the top and the bottom. Now there's a reason for this flat metal plate. It isn't just for looks. It actually helps save the bag from itself. See right. when the bag compresses what happens is it overlaps to, to the top here. What will happen is it'll actually eat into any kind of shard up object and damage that bag itself. So this is protecting the bag from itself on both the top and the bottom. And then we can control it with this. 
Now, this controller is really something that's optional, but it's something that we think is well worth it. Now, if you wanted to, you can go with kind of a basic setup where you would just tie in all four of the airbags and have like a little valve off the back, like a Schrader valve, and you can manually adjust it higher or lower to a different setting. But this makes it all the more fun because you can individually change each one of these four valves inside of the cab. And you talk about it being fun. I mean, there is something inherently cool about making the truck lean or drop in the front or do all that. That's fun. But like we said, it also helps with the towing. And that's really what the name of the game is. And the cool thing about the controller is you can control all four bags individually. So let's say you load up a little heavy on the one side, you can push that one bag up and, and get it all nice and level when you're going down the road. Now this plug and play compressor comes with a three quarter horsepower engine, so it'll have more than enough. It's a continuous duty three and a quarter horsepower engine, yeah. so it'll have more than enough power to do what you need to do. Plus, we're gonna add with it this five gallon stainless steel tank, so it'll have plenty of volume to tie in, like this guy, for instance, has got an air horn to it. So we'll get rid of his little air horn tank, tee into here, and you can do it all in one. Now, there's a couple different bungs you'll see both on, on both ends of it. it. Gives you the option to tie into different accessories. All we really need, though, is one to go to and from the compressor, and that's for our application. If you want to, you can and add in stuff like his train horn, other type of things, but it gives you the option there. Yeah, you hook this to the battery, you run the lines to that, and you run your controller to this, and it's nice and easy. You know what's really cool too, is you think about it, when you're hooking up to the trailer, the nice thing with the bags in the back, you can actually dip down to lower than it would have been in stock configuration. So you can lower the truck, back up under the hitch, raise it back up, lift the trailer, and you're cruising down the road. It's just another one of the benefits from this heavy duty four link towing system from Airbag It. I love this thing, man, and it looks cool too. I like that you don't have to get out of the truck to hook up. Yeah. All right, so I'm underneath the truck to give you guys a little bit better look at what we're trying to do here in locating this track bar. Now, we've taken off the differential cover. Now we need to go ahead and install this mounting bracket like this. It'll be sandwiched with the diff cover over it and our track bar will mount to it right here. Now remember, the track bar is in place to keep the rear end from moving side to side with our new four-link system. So before you go ahead and bolt on the new bracketry, you need to clean up the old surface area to make sure you get a nice good seal. In doing so, we hit it with a little brake parts cleaner and then hit a little silicone all the way around. Now, it's important to make sure that it seals well because not, you don't not only want this stuff leaking all over the ground, all the diff oil it makes a mess, but it doesn't hold a lot of volume in here. Before you know it, this thing will go bone dry and they'll start eating up that gear. So last thing I need to do is hit this about one more time to get off the old silicone, then we can reseal it and put the new one in place. Welcome back to Truck U. So today we've been installing our heavy duty four link towing package from Airbag It, and we're just about ready to put these babies in. That's kind of where the magic happens. But you know what? Earlier we were talking about controlling the whole system, and this is what's gonna do it. These are the buttons you get to push. This is the fun part. So you take a look at the controller right here. You can see all bags up, all down, or front up, front down, rear up, rear down. Here's the individual controls for each of the four bags. It lets you fine tune it. And also up top, we've got some presets, and the presets can really make your life a lot easier. Yeah, this controller makes this whole system pretty fun. You know what I mean? It's, and it's really handy too, because like these presets, let's say you've got a couple different trailers you're pulling with, this truck. One's maybe a little bit lighter. It's a snowmobile trailer. One's a heavy work trailer. Right. It needs different settings for the airbags themselves. So boom, you hit number one and that's your snowmobile. Two is your work setting or whatever it is. It just makes life a little bit more convenient. Takes some of the guesswork out of things. Yeah. Now you're getting this ready. This is about ready to slide in, but we had to do a couple of different things before we roll it up in there. Yeah. First things first, you need to go ahead and mount the mounting bracket on the bottom first. And that's where our lift comes into play. The next thing you need to do really is just put on these compression fittings and put on your plumb your line. Now, now, you want to make sure that you use some pipe dope or thread sealant on it so it doesn't leak. The other thing is you get plenty of line that comes with this stuff. Right. Make sure you cut these a little bit longer than shorter because you don't want to put the bag in place and go, oh no, at the last minute you realize you're too short and you got to take it all out or put in another connector. The more connections you have, the more chance you have for an airbag leak and leaks are not good with an airbag system. All right, well, let's get this in place there. Here, you got, you got this? That? I yeah, got I'll the... get this. You thread it through. All right. You can be good. in charge of the... Uh, the air piping there. All right, hold on a second here. I'll start feeding it through for you. So keep in mind when you're doing this, one very important thing to remember is don't go wrapping that line around the exhaust or anything and try to keep it away from as many moving parts as you can as well. So, ah, there we go. I need to be a little taller sometimes. <laughs> we'll get you some lifts. You know? <laughs> Cool. All right. So what we'll do is then we can we can raise we can raise this up right here, and as you can see, that's getting closer. 
we'll just guide that through the holes. So that's gonna fit right up into that hole and you can kind of see how this is all going to come together. Now everything looks pretty good, all the hard parts in place and back and you know, it's not just about looks. For us, we had a, a purpose in mind and this truck's doing a lot of heavy towing or it's going to be. Right. And you know what, when you've got the leaf spring system that comes from the factory, the problem is, is well, you get a, a, the stance changes. The back wants to sag and the front lifts up and it creates a whole bunch of problems up front. So this airbag system is gonna solve that problem for us. We can really load up this truck. It's gonna increase our towing capacity and give us a better ride when it's loaded and when it's unloaded. So you know what, this thing will be nice and smooth going down the road and we've got a bunch of different options and what we can do with all the fun controllers we're putting on it. You know, there's another side benefit of this as well as far as the leaf springs and the metal on metal kind of thing that goes when it's stock, all of that vibration resonates up through the cab. With the bags all the way around, that's going to soak up a lot of that. So not only are you going to get all the benefits you talked about, but it's going to be like driving a car, but with all the possibility of pulling a lot of stuff. And that's cool. Yeah, you know, and it all comes down to this add-on controller we're putting up front or underneath here. Now this controller is going to give us the ability to adjust this thing on all four corners and have presets and all kinds of fun stuff so we can get the most out of this airbag system. Now it's just a point of finding the right location to mount it. Now here's one of the lines that comes from that back bag. And Bruno talked about this last week and you stressed the importance of not screwing it up, right? If you are gonna mess it up, mess it up on the side of making this line too long because it'll be easier to trim a little off than it will be to put some kind of extension on there and try to get something on there that's not going to leak. Now the next thing we had to do as far as this goes is find the spot for this. And this looks like a pretty good spot right here. Yeah, there's some air horns in the way that I think we're gonna relocate. And the reason why we want to put the controller here, it's pretty much centrally located. So the lines be generally about the same length so you'll have the same amount of air supply going back and forth and for us the key thing is making sure that these air lines are away from the exhaust right. and also want to make sure they're not in an area that they can get pinched if you pinch the line or you let it get melted on the exhaust the whole system is going to deflate and it's definitely not what you want to have happen with an airbag system. All right, let's get this horn out of the way. Do you need a hand there? Yeah. You got it? Yeah I think so. Don't hurt yourself. No, you got a bracket right there. There you go. There we go. All right. So we got the air horn out of the way and we made a little bit of room for our plug and play control box. Now we're gonna have to fab up a bracket for that, but that's no big deal. We can get that handled and get that done. So we come back down here and we take a look. Now the air horn was powered by this little two gallon air tank that he had. We got this out of the way too and we're gonna replace this with big twins right here, man. Two stainless steel five gallon tanks and there's a lot of advantages to going with the stainless steel. Now I like it just because it looks pretty, but beyond that there's a much more <laughs> practical purpose. And the fact is we're in get more volume obviously going with a bigger tank a five gallon one this single five gallon tank can handle the air horns and our airbag system but we're going to go with duels and then we'll explain that in a minute one thing i want to show you though is why we're going to a stainless steel tank versus the one we had here we cut it open and you can see inside that got a lot of rust and corrosion sitting here. Now this is a bad thing, you know, because what's happening is all this rust and corrosion is going through your entire airbag system. Not so bad that's getting into the bags, which isn't a good thing. The worst thing is, is it can hit the control valves before it gets to the bags. You get all kinds of this gunk in those control valves, it's gonna lock up your whole system. Now, why does this happen? Well, it's like with an air compressor back at your shop. What it's doing, it's pulling the moisture out of the air and putting it inside of here. The more human environment you're from, the more contamination you're gonna have, and that is not a good thing. Yeah, those are some pretty healthy sized chunks yeah. of rust, man, and chunks do bad things to valves and solenoids, like you said, so that's good. We'll get that out of the way. Now, the other reason that we're gonna go with two is we're making a work truck that's gonna be doing a lot of different things. Not only do we want to blow the air horns when we need to and work the <laughs> airbags, but you know what? We might want to use some of the air tools from time to time, fill up the tires, work on right. stuff, whatever. That way, we'll have more than enough air to do that with the twin tanks. Now, the question is, where are we going to put them, right? Now, we've got some room right over here on the side. Yeah, I was looking at that. Now, let me Can get you this. tuck it up inside? Yeah, absolutely. i got more than enough room, man. All uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it just looks good sitting right there. Now, there you go, all right? So I'm gonna tuck it up in here. Now you see it? Whoop. Now you don't. Now you don't, and that baby's hidden, man. And then we'll get the one on the other side as well. We'll have our duels. So we've got our five gallon tanks mounted on either side. They're in a fixed location, and we've now got a home for our control module. Now the plug and play module is really nice because it all comes pre-wired and pre-tested, so you know it's gonna work, and they put it in an 11 gauge steel box, so you know it's gonna be safe from the elements. We had to go ahead, though, and make a mounting bracket for it. So we've done that, it's secure. Now it's time to start doing some plumbing and some wiring. You know, 
if you really want a quick kind of overview on how the whole system works, it's pretty simple. You've got the motor in there that's going to run and that's going to kick air. You've got two inlets on the side, right, or two fittings, and that'll shoot air out to the tanks. They'll hold the tanks and then you've got your return hole right there. That'll bring the air back into these individual valves that are right there. They'll go through the pressure switches and kick them out to the, each individual airbag. Even on the face of this thing, it tells you which bag is going from which valve. So they really have taken it and made it as easy as they could possibly make it, which is very nice. Yeah, now all we're gonna do is go ahead and bring this to our battery so we'll have power. And then, we, you know, keep in mind we order this for our Smart Ride controller. Right. So they've gone ahead and done all the wiring for it. All we have to do is plug it in and we are ready to rock and roll. Welcome back to Truck U. Now, finally, we're up here in the front and we can start ripping this apart and getting the new parts in. Fortunately for us, it's a lot easier up here in the front yeah. than it was in the back. So all that's done, it's ready to go. Now up here in the front, we had to rip some of this stuff out. And by this, I mean, most notably, this coil spring. All right, so that's out of the way. This is going to be replaced with this right here. So we've got our mount, we've got our bag, and our top spacer. And all that's going to run up in here. But what we had to do first was run this hose up through this line here, up through this hole, so we can run it to the back. As you can see, the same thing applies as we had in the back. We want to keep this plenty long so we have a lot of room to work with, so we can keep it away from any places where it get kinked or crushed. Also, we'll keep it away from the exhaust so it doesn't melt. So we're almost done feeding this through, and we can go ahead and put our assembly in the way. So this will go up and sit in here like the spring did, and keep in mind that really it's only going to be one bolt holding this in place, that the weight of the truck is going to keep this in place just like it did that spring. Now, up here we've got our, our four inch lift kit. Remember, we're going four up in the front and two in the back, and that will give this thing a nice even ride going down the road, even though this thing's under full load. Now, also, once we get this into place, we're gonna need to change the front shocks. Not only are we gonna go with an upgrade or a more robust shock, but one that's gonna be longer, be able to compensate for our four inch lift up front. How's that coming? Good. So yeah, this is much easier than the back. Yep. Okay, so the wiring is all done. Now the last thing we need to do underneath here is go ahead and tie everything together with the airlines. They do give you good stuff to work with. I mean, this is uh, brake lines from big rigs from air brakes, so it can take a pretty good beating. Let me real quick show you how these fittings work. And what It's a compression fitting, and it does a really good job of sealing things up. You've got the locking nut here, then you've got this little ferrule, then you've got this crush sleeve. Now the crush sleeve goes in the end like that, and it actually, the idea is to keep this line from crushing down when you tighten it up. So as long as it doesn't crush, it stays in a nice circle, you'll have a nice complete fitting and everything will be good. You won't have any air leaks anywhere throughout the entire system. Now this is an 05, so we have the luxury of avoiding that diesel particulate filter. If you're working on an 08 or newer and you've got the DPF system in there, you want to steer clear of that because that thing gets insanely hot. So you know, from the exhaust, six or eight inches is pretty good for, the, for that stuff typically, but from the DPF, we always recommend run it on the other side of the truck if you can. Stay as far away from that as possible. It's a good idea. Snake it along the frame rails. Maybe find those brake lines or fuel lines or all that. Get it tied up in there nice and tight. You don't want anything sagging. You don't want to catch a branch or something on the yeah. side of the road and it yanks out all your hoses because then you're back to square one, only now you're repairing it instead of installing it new. So make sure you get them up there good and tight. Hey, Matt, I'm going to go ahead and break these loose. All right. You got it? Hold on here. I'll start draining it out a little bit. Now we're just about ready to drop the truck back down onto the ground. But before we do that, we need to replace these existing brake lines that ran along the axle right there. Now it's just kind of hanging around in place and we don't want to tie that back in. We want to make it better. The kit actually comes with plenty of stainless steel braided brake lines. So we're going to put that in right now. Yeah, you can see where some of the bracketry gets in the way right here with these rigid lines. And with a rigid line, you don't want to try and bend it in place because you can easily kink it and then you're going to have to start all from scratch because you can't have a kink line. It'll never hold the pressure. So this will solve our problem and they give us plenty of it. What we're going to do is mount it up here, up on the frame somewhere. We'll just drill a hole and that's where our split will be going up to the front of the chassis. And these ends will go right here on either the brake calipers in the back and we'll have plenty of line to keep out of the way of all the moving parts. Now, some of you may be wondering why that track bar is dangling over there in front of Bruno like a big old side of beef. Well, the whole thing is it won't really hook in right now because the axle's hanging and the suspension is all extended. We need to wait until we get it back down on the ground. We compress everything, get everything where it needs to be. Then we can tie that track bar in and that'll get the whole system tied back together. 
So the airlines are all run. Everything is wired up. This system is all ready to go. And you know what the cool thing is about this? They calibrate it for you before they ship it out. So that's one less thing you've got to worry about. Very nice. Yeah, when we called the guys up at Airbag and we said, you know, we want that plug and play controller. We want the smart ride controller in the cab. We want all the bells and whistles. So they took care of it for us. And they'll do the same for you. So all you have to do is make your connections and you are ready to fly. You know, we've got this thing in the bed off of right now. So you can see all the hard work we've done and how cool the whole system is. It does is. look good. Yeah, you know, there's one thing we have to left to do is to run this auxiliary, auxiliary line through the chassis, but we wanted to leave it out to show you guys that, you know, since we're doing all this work, we're putting all this stuff in, we want to reap some of the benefits of this by having the, the option on our work truck to, off the back here, we can run auxiliary line and pump up tires or run power tools, all that fun stuff. You know what? It was well worth it, I think, and it will be handy in the long run. <laughs> you know, you talk about the plug and play right in there. You talk about the smart ride controller right here. Now, this is on the inside of the cab, and this is actually where we're going to control everything, right. right? So we've got our buttons here. We can go all up, all down, front up, front down, individual bags right there, presets up on the top. It's all right here. I'm just about ready to start playing, man. Snoop I don't know, before like... you start hitting switches, we need to check for air leaks. Well, that's the last thing we need to do. And with the body off or the bed off, it's an easy thing. You take a soapy mixture like this, and you just spray these fittings. You see bubbles start happening. You know you've got a leak, and you can address them. But, man, I think we did it right the Hurry first up. time around. We are ready to go. We ready to play? Yeah. Now, take a look at this. All right, so I'm going to go uh, front side down. Here's the scenario. I'm at the drive-thru trying to get some food, right? Okay. She rolls up on the roller skates, and she's trying to take my order. And I'm like, sweetie, I can't hear you because I'm sitting too high in the air, right? Let me drop it down here. Hold on. Let me get this. You ready? Uh Oh, now that's going to be a little bit better. I'll take a triple cheeseburger and a five-gallon bucket of Coke and uh, some fries to go with that shake, if you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. All right? Now, another scenario. You talk about the work truck, so I'm having some fun, but we can drop the back down, right? Now we can hook it up to the trailer. Now, watch this. Oh, yeah. That's oh. just cool right there. That's awesome. Oh, life just got a lot easier, didn't it, right there? Yeah, so for you guys at home, if you're lazy like Matt and you don't want to get out and adjust the trailer behind you to raise it up and down, you can drop this thing to the ground, back in, pop it back up, and drive off down the road. Now, I don't know why it's going to be like that. Come on, I'm just being real with you guys. Now, the inside of these airbags is cool because there's a bump stop built in, so you can save the truck from well, yourself from damaging your own truck by the bump right. stops will keep everything protected, pop it back up, and you're good to go. All right. Yeah, okay. It's a great work truck, but it's also fun to play with because you're at the red light and you dropped it down next to the people. They're looking at the truck. Oh, that's a cool truck, and you dropped it all the way down. Now you're It's thinking, a diesel truck, not a 64 Impala. It's the best of both worlds is what it is. <laughs> And I am out of here, baby. That looks cool, man. That is pretty Too cool. I'll give you that. Fun. Yeah. 